back side of that ball. Let's talk about that. I'm not hitting the lights. Isn't that cool though? Aaron Rodgers got to make him. But they practice that stuff. Sometimes it seems like that's luck, but they practice that. All right. So right now, let's find the max height of that ball. How high did he get? Any suggestions? Oh, what do you think? I love it. I mean, he's talking about the actual derivative of this. Remember the tangent vector? Mm -hmm. He says find the derivative vector, the tangent vector. And he said set something to zero. Now there's two components. Which one should we really, really think about setting to zero? Why? Because this one, everyone, do you notice the x component? That derivative, the t just comes off, this will always be constant. He's talking about the y component of the velocity vector, right? That's what this is. This is that velocity vector, aka the tangent vector. He says, go over here to this one, take its derivative, which is just this. You all agree? Mm -hmm. Take off that t. What's two times a half? It's one. I get minus nine point eight t, right? He says take this, set it equal to zero. Good job. All right. Nine point eight t equals zero. And he says solve for t. What's t equal to? Twenty five point four. Sign of 55 divided by 9.8. All right. I'm guessing the whole, the whole path took about 4.2 seconds. This should be about halfway, right? Is it? 2 point something like that. I'm guessing. I'm sure I'll be. I mean, even though he has 2 meters in height, right? To the ball, but it's probably about 2.0 something seconds. All right, and I'll go like this. Now you can store that somewhere, but now how do you get the height? Take this number and plug it back where? Not the original equation. Yeah, not back into R prime at t, you'll get zero. The same, go back into the y component, don't forget that plus two, All right? So let me rewrite this so everyone knows where I'm putting, this, putting that back into. Feel free to type down your calculator right now. The same, don't put it in here. That's the x component. Say so put it back in this one. 25.4 sine of 55 t substitute there minus one half g t squared. Substitute it here. Use 9.8 plus a two. Don't forget about that plus two meters, right? I'll give it two more meters. All right. So when you substitute 2.13 here and 2.13 there and square it and use 9.8. I use the storage button again, so you can just use the letter X. And I just type, I store this to X. And then I go 25.4 times sine 55 times X minus 1 half 9.8 times X squared plus 2. All right, what's the max height? This will be a meter. see that in the fans video. It's hard to see that on the TV. It just TV went out of view. Cool. Hey, one more thing. Someone else posted an article.
investigate this. And we hear about all this stuff, like we hear about fake news and all this. Well, look at this guy saying in this article. I mean, the next day you can see it was posted. For me, I just heard alert. Aaron Rodgers, Hail Mary throw, actually traveled what? Almost 100 yards. They're talking about the actual what? Arc length. Can we investigate that? I love it. What can we use? We just learned it today. Like the curve. Sound good? Well, let's try it. We'll use a calculator. We'll just see. Did it go actually 100 yards? Yeah, we know meters and yards. There's a little conversion in there. I mean, there's like 1.09 yards in one meter. So when we're done, we'll keep everything in meters and just convert it back to see what the yards is. See if the way it's at 100 yards. Sound good? So we got to do this. Go ahead and try it. I'll write on the board too. We're going to challenge this article that his Hail Mary actually traveled almost 100 yards. Well, he has the word almost in there. But is it close? Let's see. I don't write this up. So I need our primate and then I need the magnitude of it. Okay. All right. What was the uh, R primate again? 25.4 cosine of 55. And what was this? 25.4 sine of 55 minus 9.8. And uh, my limits of integration, we have to know the time it took from the earlier problem. Zero, four point, you want to, let's go up to 4.21 seconds. That's what we'll do. So let's go zero to 4.21 seconds in a year. Square root of, okay, be careful typing those in your calculator. Square that. The calculator automatically puts a Prince on my square root. Does it do it with yours? So I'll let that be there. And then you're like, now square this guy. 25.4 cosine of 55 plus square all this. 25.4 sine 55 minus 9.8. You want to just use the variable x off the calculator? I'll put a dx here for that. Just because most people just use the letter x off the calculator. Just be careful parentheses, and we'll see what you get. Did it go 100 yards? Now, keep in mind, our answer is going to be in meters, right? So I just want to get set up first. But when we're done, can I just multiply by 1.09 to see if it went 100 yards? I'm just challenging this guy. Nerd alert. All right, when well, you know your mathematics, let me get something. in degree mode, right? Switch it to radian instead of degree. <laughs> oh, I have a crazy answer. It's crazy though, because this is radian mode, and then this section's all degree mode. <laughs> all right, what'd you get? I got 500. I had it in radian. I forget. See, do you know this? Hit the second enter button, see if that works. I'll tell you what I got. When I typed all this in my calculator, I got to be about here. Right about that. But then I got to multiply, what is it? 1. How many yards is that? What's 78 times 1.09? It's not 100. Yeah, it's about, what, 85 yards? So that's what I'm getting for the arc line. Right? Almost 100 yards. Okay. I know. Yeah, but you're 15 yards off. Right? Isn't that neat? You can really explore this stuff and find the actual length of it. It's kind of cool. All right. Hey, I wanted to do the problem that was in the textbook, and it had x, y, and z components. So I'm going to do that now. Then we'll come back and look at some more of these problems. So we've got about an x and a y and a z component for this. So this is from the textbook. I'll give you the page number two. <coughs> This is in 13.4. This is number 31. And 13.4. So what they told us was, here's what they gave us. 
They said the initial velocity is, they give a vector, 50i 80k. 50i plus 80k. You okay if I write that in component form? 50i 80k. So what's the y component? Zero. So I'm just going to put it like that. They wrote it in standard basis form. They said, oh, the spin of the ball resulted in a southward acceleration of 4 feet per second squared. And they need the acceleration as, I and mean, here comes A of T. This was given. The acceleration was negative 4J. All this out of the way. Negative 4J. Negative 32 on the K component. So what's the X component? Zero. Zero. Alright, there's all the information about the ball. What's the question? Where does the ball land and with what speed? Where does the ball land and with what speed? And they did indicate this ball, the ball is thrown eastward into the air from the origin in the direction of the positive x-axis. So if you want to know when we're saying, all right, here's the positive x-axis. The ball is being thrown in this direction towards the positive x-axis. Well, they want us to figure out where does the ball land Let's just go get position. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Let's go get position. And when the Z component, when the Z component is zero, it's going to be on the ground, right? It'll be in the XY plane. All we got to do is get the R of T. All right? What's V of T? Ooh, what's the velocity vector? Well, I'll just put a C for constant here. Let's integral to negative 4. Negative 4 p. Alright, plus constant. What's the integral of negative 32? Negative 32 t plus c. Negative 32 t plus constant. What's the constant for v naught? This was a what? 80? What's this constant? Zero. Zero? I'm Maybe sorry. I should put the plus c's first and I'll put all the constants in. So I'll do that. Let me write it again. V of t is now, because v is 0 equals v string in terms of the initial velocity vector, that's a 50. That's a negative 4t plus a 0. And this is negative 32 plus a e. All right, what's our All right, here comes position. This is the position. 50t, negative, what's the integral of that? Is that 2t squared? And what's that? This is the one we're worried about. Negative 32 t squared over 2 plus 80 t <coughs> plus constant, right? Now, all these have plus constants. I'm just not writing them because they said it was thrown from the origin. So if it's thrown from the origin, this will be just what? 0, 0, 0 for each constant. So I'm not even going to write the plus these. They said it was thrown from the origin. Plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. Now, where does ball land? It lands when, which one of those is equal to zero? It used to be the y component when it was two-dimensional space. Now we're talking about, you know, when it was two-dimensional space, just thinking about ball went straight like that. It's equal to zero. This is what we're going to do. Take that guy and set to zero. And that means it'll be sitting in the xy plane. All right? Negative 16t squared plus 80t. Uh, we can factor that. We can factor out of that. 16 t. You're left with negative t plus 5. All right, there's two times. It's when t equals 0. Yeah, when it's thrown from the origin. What's the other answer? 5. Negative 5. We know exactly everyone. At 5 seconds, that ball is going to land. 5 seconds in the air. Let me go back to the question. We'll see if we really answer this. Where does the ball land? Oh, they want they want the actual point. They want the x, y, z point. So where can I plug this in? On the x. Go back to R of t and just plug it right back into the position. It'll give the position of that point. So what's that position? 50 times 5? 250. Negative 2 times 5 squared? And what's negative 16 times 5 squared plus 80 times 5? I think I should know that because I was just playing around with that. 
what should be the Z component? It's going to be when it's on the ground. So this should turn when I plug it in here, I should get what? Zero. Zero. I did do those right, didn't I? Lucky I can get back here. Do the little errors, forget the parentheses. Is that what I care then? Something else I want us to explore <laughs> in this section. Should we not put it on a vector component form or just... I'm going to write it as a point. Okay. Great question. The way they've stated the question, Art, they wrote, where does the ball land? Okay. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to draw an actual point in the X, Y, Z plane. That's sitting there, right there. That's where it's going to land. It took five seconds, right? Um, these next two problems. I want us to explore these. I actually put problems like this on the practice set. This is like number 25 and 27 from the textbook. This is at 13.4. It's okay. We, we know how to deal with this, right? Just explore things. In these two particular problems, though, I want you to understand that they gave us only limited information. They maybe gave us the initial speed, maybe the angle. They didn't give us as much information as before. So for those two problems, I was wondering if we could create another formula. I do want to point out, in both these problems, it was launched from the origin. Okay? So I do want to say it was launched from the origin. And we can just think two-dimensional space. I was just wondering if you could help me derive another formula that would make these problems much easier to solve. Okay? So I'm going to start out. What was our thing? We're just going to derive one more formula. Acceleration vectors look funny. Let's see what it looks like. Right at that point. What's A prime of two? So What's that derivative right there? That's a negative cosine t. Okay. What's that derivative? Negative two sine t. All right, everyone plug in the power of four, power of four stuff. You know what I get? Negative squared of two, and this time up. And this is what I wanted you to see. Which, someone indicated this, was it last class or two classes ago? Which way is that pointing? It's pointing right back at the center. That's something I want to see, something rotating in a circle. Think of a wheel, right? Think of any kind of wheel or something. The acceleration vector is pointing what? Edward. Cool. The problem they did in the book they were over and they did make it a helix. But that's okay, as long as you make your table and plot the points, you can still get that, uh, you know, get that shape that's a helix. That's it. Great job, everyone. Hey, uh, anybody have any questions about the practice set? You just write it all out again. This is what? V0. V0 cosine theta. T. This is V0 sine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. T minus 1 half GT squared. I don't need the plus H naught because it's from the origin, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I want to talk about a formula for X. Can we find a formula for x, which would be the distance, right? All right, well, let's start out. Like right there, the distance it would take for this thing to hit the ground. So what would the y component have to be? Zero. Zero. Let's start with that. So and that's what we're doing. We're going to explore to figure out a nice, simple formula for what x could equal. You go, well, it's equal to this. Yeah, but look, it's got a v-naught variable, it's got a theta variable, and another t, right? we got to know all these different values. So I'm going to start with this. In order to hit ground, what's the y going to equal? Zero. So I'm going to write 0 equals v naught sine theta t minus 1 half g t squared. We are just exploring another formula that you and I can create on our own to make these problems way easier to deal with. Here, I'm just going to point it out. Make these easier for us, could you? And what we'll do is we'll figure out another formula to use. So when at this is when it hits the ground, right? The y component equals zero. Can you help me factor this? What can I factor out? The t? t, yeah. And then what are you left with? V naught sine theta minus one half gt. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's focus on this second one. Can you solve for t here? We're deriving a new formula, which is good for problems 25 and 27. What would t equal to if this equals zero? Ignore that one because t just equals what? Zero. All right, yeah, we know that. That's when it was here. T equals zero. We want this t. What would be the time it takes for it to travel the distance x? So, okay. So 
So would t equal be solved that? That equal to that. Isolate the t. T equals to v naught sine theta divided by 4.9 g. Okay, all right. Sounds good to me. I'll add this over here to this side, and I heard you say v naught sine theta. It equals this, so I can multiply the 2 over here and then divide the g. Is that what I agree? 2 v naught sine theta all over uh, g is equal to t. <coughs> and we're going to substitute this. This is going to what variable? T. Are you ready? So in all color variable, look. This is now going to get substituted in this. We're going to make a formula for x. What is x equal? This is for these two. <coughs> it looks like I've got x equal to a v not cosine theta times, put a big parentheses, and jam that in there. And we're almost done. Put all that in there. What would that be? 2 v not sine theta. Another reason I want to derive this with you, I sometimes forget this formula. <laughs> so I go through this. I know it takes about a minute. They're like, let me go figure this out. Almost done. Just simplify this. Then I just put that right there coming from here. This will be our formula for x if it's thrown away or launched from the origin. For the distance x that this travel, whatever it is. Right? Doesn't have to be a golf ball. It be something in the military. Alright? What's v naught times v naught? V naught squared. Put a square on that. Then you got a 2 in there? You got a sine theta? Cosine theta. And then cosine theta, and it's all over what variable? G. G, which really is a copy. <coughs> but a. don't you have a trig I2 sine A sine B? You've got a good eye. What do you spot? The trig identity, 2 sine he theta. He spots a trig identity. Does anyone else see this? So we're going to use it. This is equal to, it's a trig identity. There's a double angle identity for this. And what's that equal to? You got it. Sine of 2 theta. And there it is. Everyone, please only use this great formula you and I derived. Thank you for being patient with me. I know it took a couple minutes. But boy, this is going to make these two problems way easier. I hope even when you do them on your practice set. Because we took the time to derive this. You broke this down, everyone. Do you see any T in there? No. Look, the T got eliminated. We eliminated it. But only use this if it's launched from the what? Origin. Origin. So let's do these two problems from the book. Okay? But use this. This is great for things being launched from the origin. I couldn't do this with Aaron Rodgers. I would have. Because Aaron was two meters up in the what? Yeah. Here, all we can figure out is when it was two meters from the right? Cool. That's distance x. Distance. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave that on the board. Can I erase the derivation? Cool. All right, well, here comes the question. Am I going to use that? No, I'm going to use this. Number 25. When I read this to you, feel free to draw a picture. This is what they said. They go, a ball is thrown at an angle of 45 degrees to the ground. If the ball lands 90 meters away, what was its initial speed? So all that wording, let's just draw a picture. 45 degrees, 90 meters, it lands. You've got to find this. The initial speed. Cool. Oh gosh, if I went in here, I could have done the substitution, but we got this now, right? Mm -hmm. Let's use that. Here I go. What's the distance? 90. 90 equals 9.8 squared. You go, no, 9.8 is the what? Is it a the G. A What's market? the initial speed? I don't know. That's my unknown. That's 9.8 and a sine of, what's 2 times 45? 90. All right. What is the sine of 90? 1. So I'll multiply this on both sides. The sine of 90 is 1. Right? Sine of 90 degrees is 1. And what do I do? How do you get V now? It was 90 times 9.8 on the calculator. 882. 
And what's that square root of that? 29.7. Yep. Meters per? Almost 30 meters per second, right? I mean, initial speed was like 30 meters per second. Cool. So this formula, great from anything being launched from the origin, a couple of problems like this, you'll see it at the end of the practice set. And one more, let's do one like 27. Let me read it to you, and I'll erase this. But they go, a gun muzzle, a gun has muzzle speed 150 meters per second. Find two angles of elevation that can be used to hit a target 800 meters away. So I'll repeat that. Let's erase this one, but let's use this again. So this is 27 from the textbook. Read it again. A gun has muzzle speed 150 meters per second. Okay. Secondly, find two angles of elevation that can be used to hit a target 800 meters away. So x will equal what? 800 meters. But they want two angles. So when you're looking at something that kind of goes like that, but maybe another angle that goes like that, right? Find the two angles of elevation that can make this happen. Let's start here. What's 800 equal to? 100 and, or that's a 50. 150 squared divided by 9.8 times sine of? Theta. Two theta, correct? Two theta. So let's isolate that sine two theta. What's sine of two theta equal to? Whatever, 800 times 9.8, all over 150 squared. And you'll see one like this on your practice set. Okay. Cool. I get sine of 2 theta equals, what do y'all get? 3.48. 3. 3.48. 3. Well, it sounds like you're one decimal off. Do you agree? The highest oh, yeah. sign yeah. can ever be is Sorry. what? One? Yeah. I just caught that. I was like, oh, it's going to give us an error. Is this number that comes out here has to be between 1 and negative 1? I'm going to agree. 0.348, yeah. 0.3, was it 0 for it? No, it's just 4 eight. Oh, no, 0.348, thank you. So, he's got this, so I'm going to be careful here. So, some angle, two, sine of 2 theta equals this. So, 2 theta must equal inverse sine of 0.348. Sure? Mm -hmm. So 2 theta must equal, let's see what we get. What's the inverse sign of that? 20.39. Okay, 20.39. Now be careful. Is one of the answers 20.39? Oh, you got to go back to degree mode now. If you're in menu mode. Is one of the angles 20.39 degrees? No, I have to divide to what? 2. The 2. So what do you get? 10.20? Yeah, let's go to one decimal place. 10.2 degrees. All right, we got one. But they want how many? Two. Two. I mean, we're going to use that all students take crack thing. You know what I'm talking about? <coughs> all students take crack. Uh -huh. Like in here, all trig functions are positive, but sine's also positive what? Here. So do you all know about this relationship? Like mm -hmm. the sine of 40 is equal to the sine of 140. The sine in terms of supplementary angles. The sine of 30 is equal to the sine of... 150. The sine of 60 is equal to the sine of 120. I can keep going all the way up to the sine of 90 equals sine of 90. Well, the sine of that angle is equal to the sine of, what's 180 minus that? Something what's 180 like minus that number? 169 something. 169.6 or something. Is that 0.6? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's say that. What's the other angle? You can check this too if you want. Here's the other angle. I'm just using that idea of supplementary angles with this sine because of how it's like, yeah, the sine of theta is equal to the sine of 180 minus theta. What do you get here? 85 something. 79.2? No, 0.8? Yeah. Is that right? 
I just checked to make sure that he should have the 90, actually. You can check that. Is it doing? Hey, that was like, looking at the practice set. Oh, that was like numbers. Oh, let's see. Number 41 and 42, the last two problems. So cool. Man, we get all this stuff. Any questions on any of this stuff? I do want to point out in this section, it did give you more practice for finding the speed, which is just the magnitude of velocity. Um, if you want to pack, practice drawing those, uh, that uh, velocity vector and acceleration vector, they gave us a couple problems on that. Um, like even number, um, number five, they drew that stuff out. You know, I'm thinking, <coughs> We should, we should do that last, everyone. I should go back to one of these problems. We had to draw the path. Not even using this, not the motion of the paper. I'm talking about just draw the actual path of something because I noticed I had a, a cosine and a sine in there. I'm just going to make this up. If you had to draw this path, I can make a table, right? <laughs> What's going on at t equal to zero? That's two and that's what? Zero. Right. And I think you all know what kind of path this will be. Think of what x squared plus y squared is. <laughs> just think of it. I made up this problem, but I just want you to see a, Oh, you've got to sketch the path of this in two dimensional space. And you go, oh, okay, this is different than this thing, right? So this is like number, just they put a problem like this around number five. So I'm going to put that. Uh, what's going on at pi over two? That's zero, that's two. What's going on at pi? That's negative two, and this is what? Zero. So does anyone see the path this thing just took? All right. Let me draw this to scale, though. Right? And if I continue this path all the way out to 2 pi, what does it really mean? Circle. Do you all notice it? x squared plus y squared equals 2 squared. And what's the radius of this thing? 4. And traveling that path. So I just want to make sure I get this all drawn. This so it looks halfway decent. And there's the path. I'll put it there this way. There's the path. All right. I was just curious if you had to draw the position vector at something not even over here, like at pi over 4. Could you do that? So what's going on at t equal to pi over 4? Could you draw the position vector? So what would be r of pi over 4? Let's just say plug in pi over 4. What's 2 times cosine of pi over 4? What's so 2 times 1 over the square root of 2? So that should be 0, right? Pi over 2? Or 2 times square root of 2 over 2 would just be that, right? Mm -hmm. What's 2 times sine of pi over 4? What's 2 times square root of 2 over 2? Square root of 2. But where would this be located? Oh, I'll use this right here. That's the position vector right there. Sound cool? I just chose, you know, some time value. How about t equal to pi over 4? All right, that's r of t. And you know where I'm getting to. I just want to, well, what if you got to find uh, r prime of pi over 4? There's another name for this. We call this the velocity vector, right? Mm -hmm. If you've got to find the velocity vector and then draw it, it should be a tangent vector, shouldn't it? And the tangent should go in the path of that particle. So remember what's traveling this way? You should notice you get a vector like this. You want to see it? What would it be? What's the derivative of this? First I'll do v of t. And then I'll do v of pi over 4. So what's v? Here, I'll get this out of the way. What's v? Oh, and this is for r prime, which would be the derivative of that. What's v of t? Negative. Two sine t. And two sine t. And two go sine t. Now, can you plug in pi over four? <coughs> okay. Just plug in pi over four, and you get negative, negative two times square root of two over two. Two times square root of two over two. And sure enough, how did this move? This vector did what right here? It went negative square root of two that way, and square root of 2 this way, and it looks like that. And right there. That's the, 
prime. Now one more. Can you find this one? Can you find the acceleration and then the acceleration vector at power 4? And I wanted you to see acceleration.